Okay, so today's book is a Roald Dahl book, and I, Roald Dahl is one of my favorite authors, and this is one of my all-time favorite books, and I know many people who know me know that I love books, and I say that, oh, well, this is my favorite book, this is my favorite book. This really is one of my favorite books. So, Roald Dahl, you might know many of his other books, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, um, the BFG are some popular ones right now. This one isn't such a popular book, but it's one of my favorite, all-time favorites. I even have a poster in my house with a quote from the book. So this is called The Min Pins by Roald Dahl. And it doesn't have a lot. It has a lot of words and not a lot of pictures. So I'll do my best job. You probably can't see the, the words, but I hope you enjoy the pictures while I read. Little Billy's mother was always telling him exactly what he was allowed to do and what he was not allowed to do. All the things that he was allowed to do were boring. All of the things he was not allowed to do were exciting. One of the things he was never, never allowed to do, the most exciting of them all, was to go out through the garden gate all by himself and explore the world beyond. On this sunny summer afternoon, little Billy was kneeling on a chair in the living room, gazing out through the window at the wonderful world beyond. His mother was in the kitchen doing the ironing, and although the door was open, she couldn't see him. Every now and again, his mother would call out to him, saying, Little Billy, what are you up to in there? And little Billy would always call back and say, I'm being good, Mommy. But little Billy was awfully tired of being good. Wow, what do you think he might do? Through the window, not so very far away, he could see the big black secret woods that was called the Forest of Sin. It was something he had always longed to explore. His mother had told him that even grown-ups were frightened to go into the Forest of Sin. She recited a poem to him that was well known in the district. It went like this. Beware, beware, the forest of sin. None come out, but many go in. Ooh, do you think you would want to go in? Why don't they come out? Little Billy asked her. What happens to them in the wood? That wood, his mother said, is full of the most bloodthirsty wild beasts in the world. You mean tigers and lions? Little Billy asked. Much worse than that, his mother said. What's worse than tigers and lions, mummy? Wangdoodles are worse, his mother said, and corn swagglers, and snaz wanglers, and vermicious nids, and worst of all, is the terrible, blood suckling, tooth pluckling, stone chuckling spitler. There's one of them in there, too. A spitler, mummy? Of course. And when the spitler chases after you, he blows clouds of hot smoke out of his nose. Would he eat me up? Little Billy asked. In one gulp, his mother said. Little Billy did not believe a word of this. He guessed his mother was making it all up just to frighten him and to stop him from ever going out of the house alone. And now... Little Billy was kneeling on the chair, gazing with longing through the window at the famous Forest of Sin. Little Billy, his mother called out from the kitchen. What are you doing? I'm being good, Mommy, little Billy called back. Just then, a funny thing happened. Little Billy began to hear somebody whispering in his ear. He knew exactly who it was. It was the devil. The devil always started whispering to him when he was especially bored. It would be easy, the devil was whispering, to climb out through that window. No one would see you. And in a jiffy, you would be in the garden. And in another jiffy, you would be through the front gate. And in yet another jiffy, you would be exploring the marvelous forest of sin all by yourself. 
it is a super place. Do not believe one word of what your mother says about wang doodles and horn swagglers and snaz wanglers and vermicious nibs and the terrible blood suckling, tooth pluckling, stone shuffling spitler. There are no such things. What is in there? Little Billy whispered. Wild strawberries, the devil whispered back. The whole floor of the forest is carpeted with wild strawberries, every one of them luscious and red and juicy ripe. Go and see for yourself. These were the words the devil whispered softly into little Billy's ear on that sunny summer afternoon. The next moment, little Billy had opened the window and was flying away. In a jiffy, he had dropped silently onto the flower bed below. In another jiffy, he was out through the garden gate. And in yet another jiffy, he was standing on the very edge of the great big dark forest of sin. He had made it. He had got there. And now the forest was all his to explore. Was he nervous? What? Who said anything about being nervous? Horn swagglers, vermicious nids? What sort of rubbish was that? Little Billy hesitated. Uh, I'm not nervous, he said. Uh, I'm not in the least bit nervous. Not me. Very, very slowly, he walked forward into the great forest. Giant trees were soon surrounding him on all sides, and their branches made an almost solid roof high above his head, blotting out the sky. Here and there, little shafts of sunlight shone through the gaps in the roof. There was not a sound anywhere. It was like being among the dead men in an enormous, empty, green cathedral. Wow. How would you feel? I think I would be very nervous. Even if I didn't believe in those things, I still think I would be a little bit nervous. All right, this is going to be the last page that we read for this part, and then I'll just break the story up into different parts. When he had ventured some distance into the forest, little Billy stopped and stood quite still, listening. He could hear nothing, nothing at all. There was absolute silence. Or was there? Hold on just one second. There was absolute silence, nothing at all. Little Billy flicked his head round and stared into the everlasting gloom and doom of the forest. There it was again. There was no mistaking at this time. From far away, there came a very faint, woozing, whistling noise, like a small, gusty wind blowing through the trees. Then it grew louder. Every second it was growing louder, and suddenly it was no longer a small wind, it was a fearsome swooshing, whooshing, whiffling, snorting noise that sounded as though some gigantic creature was breathing heavily through its nose as it galloped toward him. Little Billy turned and ran. Little Billy ran faster than he had ever run in his life before, but the swooshing, whooshing, whiffling, snorting noise was coming after him. Worse still, it was getting louder. This meant that the thing, the maker of the noise, the galloping creature, was getting closer. It was catching him up. Run, little Billy, run, run, run. He dodged around massive trees. He skipped over roots and branches. He bent low to the flash under bows and bushes. He had wings on his feet. He ran so fast. But still, the fearsome swooshing, whooshing, whiffling, snorting noise grew louder and louder as it came closer and closer. Little Billy glanced back quickly over his shoulder, and now, in the distance, he saw a sight that froze his blood and made icicles in his veins. Oh my, what do you think he saw? All right, we're gonna stop there, and I'll read a little bit more next time.